Good morning, good morning. Sun is shining. It's a beautiful Saturday. It's like 50 degrees. And I just want to take a quick look at this Chevrolet Silverado. Oh, we gotta get the water out of that bed. Because uh, I have an appointment coming in on it around, well, we don't know yet. It's gonna be somewhere between one o'clock and three o'clock. So what I want to do is just, uh, you know, make sure everything looks okay with it. Like I just said, get the water out of that bed and, uh, you know, have it ready and up front for the customer when he gets here. This truck does not have that easy lower tailgate, so this thing drops like a rock. You don't want to make that mistake. You don't want to basically tell a customer, oh, this has the easy drop tailgate, and you just pull that handle, let it go. You do that, and it doesn't have it, it's going to slam down so loud, and it's going to embarrass yourself. So don't make that assumption unless you know for certain that it has it. I'm going to take this around the block real quick just to uh, make sure everything sounds okay. And then we'll just park it back where it was and wait for our customer to come in later on. I'm gonna tell you something in a split second that I bet a lot of people don't know about your rear view mirror. So let me just pull over here for a second and show you something. Obviously, when you move your rear view mirror, we all know we can do this, right? Now, did you know that this is another pivot point where you can move the whole mirror up and then you could also readjust. And what it does is it brings the mirror higher up into the window frame, which gives you more visibility here. Did you know that or did you not know that? Maybe everybody knew that, I don't know. This truck feels absolutely fine. It doesn't feel like there's anything uh, that I need to worry about. Brakes feel good. It is a 2018, it's certified, you know, so it's gonna be, uh, it's gonna be in, in great mechanical condition. Use my washer fluid there, clean up the window. Last night I'm on the computer working a, uh, I'm working on a project right now. It's a Dave B. Sell Chevy project. And I was on my computer looking for old photos of different things. And in the process of doing that, I actually found uh, three videos that I made for Facebook before I even started the YouTube channel. It was like little small 10 second clips. And then in the body of the text of the post, I would write about what each, uh, each of these little videos was about. So I'm gonna show them to you right now. Uh, basically in the automotive industry, there's all sorts of terms and things like that or dealership lingo or dealership jargon. And what I did was I made like three little short videos about three of those terms. And the goal was to keep doing that. I just never did. I kind of fell off and I never made any more. But uh, here, check this out. This is the first one. The broom, or to broom a customer. Uh, basically what that is, is when a salesperson, you know, pre-qualifies and makes a very quick judgment call that they don't have a customer that's a buyer and they don't wanna waste their time. So they basically broom the customer out the door. Um, you know, that's not something you should do. It's not something that I do because you never really know who you're dealing with. Never pre-qualify and never pre-judge because you never know who you could be dealing with and, and what they're ready and willing to buy at any given moment. So don't broom your customers. Here's the second one. A house mouse is basically the salesperson at the dealership that gets all the cheese, right? They get all the deals and they might get deals from management or they might get deals from, you know, from the back office or from somebody else. And other salespeople will look at them and call them a house mouse because, you know, they get all the easy deals. Now, normally the house mouse is the person that would handle the customers the best. And that's why the dealership, you know, management and all wants them to be in front of them. It's also usually a term that the salespeople that don't do as good a job call the people that are because they're watching them sell 18, 19, 20 cars. Well, maybe they're only selling 10 or 12. So they automatically think that they're a house mouse uh, when really they're just probably doing their job and, and working well and just selling cars. I don't care where I get the deals from. I want them all.
the skate or to skate somebody is when a salesperson will basically take somebody else's customer. So, you know, let's say I get a customer that comes in the front door and they say, hey, is, uh, you know, is Bob here? And Bob's off that day. And I say, oh no, Bob's off, but I can help you out. And then I help the customer out, I sell the car. And then the next day I'm at work and Bob comes in and I never tell Bob that I sold his customer. And if Bob isn't on top of things, he doesn't know that his customer was taken and sold and he would have been skated. Uh, we don't have a lot of that that goes on here. Um, you know, we get along pretty well. There's only five, six salespeople. So um, it's not necessarily a problem here, but I can imagine it's a problem at larger dealerships, especially where salespeople maybe don't have access to like a, uh, a CRM system or something like that to keep track of their clients. If you remember last Saturday, I sold a Trailblazer RS that was a locate. We had to get it from our Booten store. Uh, we did get that truck in and it is, uh, it's here. I have to get it cleaned up and gassed for Monday evening when the client's gonna come pick it up. So since I don't have anything going on at the moment, I'm gonna do that right now. Then I'm gonna take that plate off because that's not a Schumacher plate. That's from a dealership that we must've got a car swapped in that they needed something from us. We took that back and they didn't take the plate off it yet. So I will grab that. Let's just see if they filled this up. When they picked it up, they did. It's got full uh, full bars of fuel, so we're good there. I'm just gonna move it in the back. We put it on a, uh, a little dry erase board in which uh, we'll have the, the time, the stock number, the type of vehicle, you know, the date of when it's going. This way our detail department knows exactly when to have it cleaned by. And uh, you know, we'll get all that done today just so we don't have to worry about it on Monday. The Trailblazer has been selling pretty well for us. People really like it. And everybody loves the power of it, which is funny because it's a three cylinder engine. Now it's turbocharged and it's a nine speed transmission in this one. So, you know, it's the technology that, that gives it that performance and that power and how it's implemented to put the power from the engine to the road. But uh, so far I have yet to have a customer come back and feel like this vehicle is underpowered. And that's with a three cylinder turbo. Now, if you compare that like a couple years ago to the Equinox, before they put the turbo in that vehicle and they had that 2.4 liter four cylinder, you know, that was known for being sort of a dog off the line and not having any kind of power. Um, you know, so it's, it's very comforting to see that the three cylinder turbo is well received. My Silverado client we were talking about earlier uh, had to reschedule for Monday, so he's not coming in today. But this did show up from the factory. What we have here is a 1LT. This has the uh, upgraded infotainment system. It's got the performance exhaust, and he upgraded to the red calipers. So it's a, a more basic Corvette, priced out at $64,580. For $64,000, this thing is beautiful. The only thing I really think it needs is some sort of a spoiler on the back. I'm not a huge fan of the way these cars look with no spoiler. It just looks like something's missing. Other than that, it's an absolutely beautiful car. And as we all know, it's the best bang for the buck when it comes to performance vehicles.
It's been a fairly uneventful day here. I haven't sold anything. Just spoke to some customers about lease buyouts. My Corvette customers stopped by to check out the car. Uh, right now I have 16 or 17 sold for the month. I have seven factory orders. Uh, some of the stuff's gonna get carried over because I have a receptionist who is not willing to take the Mazda that she decided to buy yet. Wow. <laughs> Looks like that'll be an April deal. But um, yeah, so far so good. It's a good month, we still have a week left. You wanna be in it? You leaving? Yeah, hello. She got a phone call. Anyway, that's the end of the video. See you in the next one.